Hello, everyone, and welcome to Call of Cthulhu, the 11th hour. We are playing the second episode of the Master of Nara Lathotep. We, I didn't make it last time because Mother Nature decided to put angel shit all over the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> what an evocative pejorative you've mm -hmm. discovered. Oh. And um, I'm, I'm quite over it, uh, seriously considering moving to the south again, at least for the next couple months. Yeah. Although Kyle just came back from there, he'll probably say, no, it's much better to be here. Oh, as I was leaving, uh, as I was leaving El Paso, I was getting winter weather warnings for El Paso, but it was 70 degrees the whole time I was there, so. There we go. I learned some uh, interesting things watching the, the substitute thing that um, Patty wishes to be tortured with having to uh, confess to her parents. By the way, I shot no! my sister. <laughs> no! Patty does not want to be tortured with this. Thank you. I think this will be great fun. I think this will be great fun. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, like, if Gussie wanted it out with her parents, it's not like Patty would have told her, no, we have to lie, but... I'm sure Gussie would have been like, just say I'm getting my appendix taken out or something like that. Uh, and my appendix. need to know you shot me. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> I had an appendectomy by means of my sister pointing a derringer yeah, at my... the appendix is gone. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that won't The be reasons issue. leading up to said appendix being gone are a little different. Oh no! That's funny stuff. Oh. That's funny stuff. So Jillian, yeah. how's things? Uh, and are are you excited to be here playing tonight? Oh boy! You know, sometimes things happen in your life, and you're like, I'd rather be playing Call of Cthulhu, and that's mm. that's where I am currently, live from my hotel room. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> things happened. Maybe it was cultists. Ooh, see, that would be cool. You what are in a hotel. Your, your characters are in a hotel room right now. <gasps> That's what I was thinking about. I'm just like, oh. wow, this is going to be ten times spookier if weird um, oh, no. hotel shit happens. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sharing, you know, anyone that's watching, you can see the nice mark oh. that has been left <laughs> on the head of Elias Jackson. Oh, shared with everyone, because... I just think it looks fabulous. Yeah. It does look like when you're yeah. baking a pie and Ooh, you. Yeah. Oh my god. <clears throat> and oh. just gotta let the little steam out. A cold pie. Oh. Awful. Awful. Yeah. Oh god. Maybe that was what the intentions were. They were getting ready to bake him and carve Maybe him up. We're just gonna do a whole bakery scene, and we ruined it. You did just kind of like go in the door, but. I did bulldoze a door open. Yeah, Sai Iori is there looking at Elias Jackson. Um, he has no pulse. I I look up at um Avery and say, "Well, I, he's he's gone." Yeah, I. I don't think there's much we can do for him in this condition. Uh, we'll need to. We'll need to we notify police. We should do that. I mean, I can't examine his body right here, but I think it would be better if we call the police or, or right now. Oh, we got a license plate, Gussie and me. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Gussie's gonna pull out a notebook and is going to start taking notes instantly and is going to start <laughs> kind of very blasé is starting to draw out the image that's on his forehead on the notes uh we need to call police we need to search this room for everything we can possibly find yeah Where's there is wise? um scattered of there's a broken coffee table and scattered about the floor um there is bits of um papers and there some business cards and uh and some other stuff um and i have uploaded them into the discord so that you guys can actually look at these documents okay. and 
This, these are the that. items that are scattered around uh, that for you to find right there um, around his body. A word to the wise. Anybody who wants to pick anything up to examine it more closely, since we're not officially tied to any sort of investigation, we ought to be wary of leaving too much evidence behind ourselves. There's some detectives using some pretty crafty work these days, and we don't want to be tied to this if we can avoid it. No, we're aggressively tied to this already. I, as far as anybody else knows, only by way of being here. This... And we want to keep it that way. Does anyone have a knife on their person? I do. We just... All right. Just make sure that it hopefully isn't the same size as the knife wounds on <clears throat> our dear friend. Um... This is a bespoke knife. I, I can't imagine it has a, a match in the world. Um, Astounding. Is there... Is there a a writing station set up anywhere? Does he have a typewriter set up any anywhere in this room where he'd been where he would have been working or anything? No. Um, there's a, the broken coffee table. Uh, it's a nice room. It has a uh, it had a sofa with a table, and he was. It looks like he was set up on the sofa and getting ready to present all of these documents to you guys. Um, before we call the uh, authorities, we should probably, um, take all of that. I don't disagree. If it was meant for our eyes anyway, as it looks like it was meant to be, then so much the better. I concur. All right, so um, what's our story here? Exactly what are we saying so that we all know what we're I saying? I think that's easy enough. We were contacted by Elias. We were told to meet him at this time this day, which we did. Some of you were seen in the lobby, which can be confirmed by people at the front desk and people at the restaurant. Um, I also asked to use the phone at the front desk so we can be confirmed to be down here um, and in people's sight at the time. Um, we heard noises in the room. We broke the door down. We saw three assailants leaving, all wielding knives. So we, oh, we, shot because they were coming at us with knives. We did not get a good look at them. They fled, we got the license plate. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. That um, check out for everyone, anything else? That's entirely accurate. I'll gather all the uh, documents and uh, let's go right away. The longer I think that we wait, the Thank more you. guilty we'll look. Should we? Should we use the phone here, or should we go to the desk? I, is there a phone in here? Uh, there is a phone, um, the but it hotel. rings the front desk, and you have to ask to be rang through to somewhere else. I see. I mean, Perhaps we could ask them to call um, somebody. Yeah. Patty, uh, why don't you use the hotel phone and mm. seem panicked? Uh, Make a panicked are... call. Pretty much on par with that, so I don't think that'll be a challenge to act. They had to know how, they had to know which room he was in. They came up the fire escape. Uh, should we, should one of us wait near the front desk and see what the reaction is at the switchboard and see, make sure there's no one involved on their end that could have told, let them know what room Jackson was staying in? I don't think any of us should be seen apart from any of the rest of us right now. I think the more that any of us is seen unattached with the rest of the group, the more evidence could be theoretically piled against us, false or not. So. Very well. For now, not a bad idea, but um, I, I don't think it's wise. I also want to get a look at the symbol on his forehead. Do I recognize it? Um, you can make a, um, a roll against... Trying to remember, I think it's a cult. I was like, a cult, a cult all this, or all this Cthulhu mythos I've been building up. Yeah, a cult oh better. I'm, I'm certainly mm. prefer a cult. Sure, um, but by golly, you you bled and sweat and and binged. Um, I will be that. spending every ounce of luck if necessary because I need to know what this shit is. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> tell me what this shit is. Ooh. <laughs> 
<laughs> nice. That is almost oh, yes. as extreme as you can get. Um, My brain is full of horrible information. <laughs> like a library, like, you are. Oh. You're not sure which one, mm -hmm. but you know that there were some death cults in Africa that. You'd have to go, you'd have to um, find a library and start looking through some books and stuff to mm -hmm. really pin down which one. But you know for certain in looking at it that that, that symbol is associated with a death cult out of Africa. Um, okay. Right. Have to find us a nice library, but I think I know a direction we can start looking in. Um, that is yeah, I mean, step there's the... uh, you're in New York. The New York Public Library has a strong uh, reference section. You're pretty sure if you, um, with this knowing where to look, you're pretty sure that you could at least pin down. If you got to the public library, you be, could be able to pin down even more that this is the cult. Perfect. We'll do that when when we can. <laughs> Patty's going to step to the hotel phone. All right. You pick it up. Ring for the front desk. Front desk. Hello. Um, we need to ring the police, please. Um, what's, what seems to be the problem? Mr. Elias. He... He's been killed. And please. it's in his room. Please, can you please phone the police? I'm sorry, which room is that? Uh, I I know that I would have had it written down. Me, Mac, Brain, no it's, remember. It's on the door. We could just look It's at on it. the door. One more time. I, 410. 410. Yeah, that's fine. It's room They're like, 410. Yeah, right away, we'll, we'll, we'll call the police. Thank you so much. And hook up the phone so is patty genuinely feeling uh distraught like that or was that I a little mean, bit of she's, acting she's dialing it up a little bit laying on the charm a little bit like the d damsel in distress sort of deal but she's very much shaken by this she did not have to dial this up by very much at all like she is she was calling for this dude in the lobby half an hour ago, like a dumbass, and she feels very guilty. <laughs> He's not in a good place. Was that you or was that me? That was well, both of y'all being idiots. <laughs> both of us being idiots, because I didn't stop you. I feel guilty. Gussie's not saying you guys got him murdered. She's not going to say that. Of but course she's not going to say it. She Just like mother's never it. going to say that you're the favorite daughter. She's not going to say you're the favorite either. Certainly not. <laughs> I know that. Bethany's the favorite. Um, oh, is that the backup character? Bethany? That we, our third sister, Bethany. Um, if I one mean, of us dies, we'd planned. be Bethany. That, yeah, honestly, I, I'm all for that. I don't know what she does or what she I don't she know what is, she's but, about, but we've got She's respectable as far as our parents are concerned, so that should give us some ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Probably married. Uh, is there anything else of interest in the room besides the papers we found or if we're able to assess the scene at all? Um, spot hidden if you want to look for other things. Um, everyone, please join me in looking about the place. <laughs> Why not? I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna check Jackson's. Ooh, God, I'm coming in hot today, boys. Ooh. Gussie's rolling like fire. <laughs> this the pockets on his jacket and and things like that. Oh. Oh no. Well, what are I you get doing? some mark experience on we're, that. We're looking around the room to see if we see anything. Okay. I think I'll help. Don't find anything. Don't worry, my eyeball. I'm I am cool as a cucumber. No I see everything, everyone. Don't worry. I don't mark it. I'm too insane to I be upset know. right now. Don't worry. Yeah, it's wrong game, wrong game. Yeah. No, I know. Uh, this is so DC. You do indeed find one other thing. Mm. Uh in the 
corner of um, the fire escape, you know, right by the fire escape, you find a hat. Hmm. Mm. And the hat, it, it's a black um, hat that's, uh, when you look, you realize it's actually a ski mask. And that mm. when it pulls down over their face, where their um, face should be, you see that there is a red piece of velvet that's been sewn into it in the mouth. And it kind of um, flaps down a little bit. And, and when you're looking at it, it, it kind of looks like an elephant trunk or something, except not well made. I see. I'm going to take mental note of that and then put it right back where it was. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I will remember elephant imagery. Yeah. Uh, it, it possibly could be trying to represent a tentacle, but... Trunk, tentacle... But more, the way it's designed, it sort of reminds you more of an elephant trunk. Okay. For for the place placement wise and right. design wise, all right, um, all right, put that back down. Mm -hmm. It is a little creepy looking, but yeah. <laughs> Can I um, identify if it's a certain kind of animal? Yeah, I'll, I could show you. I found a badly made mask. Ugly thing. I think it looks like an elephant, but I don't know. Elephants have big ears. That mask doesn't have ears. Well, that would look ridiculous if they put big ears on it. You're right. It looks ridiculous. Can I roll biology to do this? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Confirm this elephant. <laughs> Might as well. Okay, there we go. Hey! Hooray! That's the same. Um, certainly. Could it be a poorly made uh, trunk that's been sewn on? Sure. Uh, but... The specific, the spe the specificity that it's a black mask with a red trunk seems to imply more of an occult, yeah, an occult theme to it versus animal. Yeah, mm. I think this might be involved, um, uh, possibly a death cult, and I think that um, because that was his specialty, um, that's what he had a lot of interest in. And it's possible this could be possibly a symbol that could lead us in the right direction. All right. Uh, everyone, we're getting some doubling according to the chat. No, so, are we? For a while. Really? How yeah. much? How long? I'm sure the whole time. The just, whole time. just a little. <laughs> just a smidge double. I don't Listen. have any audio enabled on anything except Zoom right now. I swear to God. It's it sometimes just happens like that, you know. That's right. Technology. Anyway, people understand. <laughs> Might be a, a sound effect for the expansion of Jillian's brain. <laughs> just echoing through my body. Okay, guys, listen. <laughs> um, oh Lord, it's uh, it's everyone but Kevin. That's doubling. Wow, really somebody's insane. special. I am Ow. special. I feel like this happened before as well. Yeah. Was it Kevin then? It, so it could be that I'm not using a headset to listen to you guys. I'm using my um, speakers, and I'm trying to make it so it's not picking up that audio from the speakers. But I may have to go hunt one down. Yeah. Mm, perhaps. Um, either way. Um, I mean, you know. Gussie is going to, um, kind of while everyone's looking around and we're talking and stuff, she's going to make her way over to um, Elias, and she is going to um, sort of crouch down next to him. We're going to find them. And she just stares at his face for too long. And then works herself up a bit and has to like aggressively like pull away and then go back to like looking like she's looking around. Yeah, uh, everyone give me listen checks. 
Probably. Ooh, is that me included, or is that just people listening to me? <laughs> uh, it's everyone. Okay, cool. I'll join no, in. Come on, guys. No. Here I come. Oh my god. Here I, here I come. I'm a middle-aged white man in the 1920s. I listen to no one. Aha! <laughs> oh my god. Thank you, Gussie. Gussie oh, is. No. You did not this is her element. Power. I guess. Yeah. Dead people. So, uh, <laughs> dead people. This is what I understand. I only understand death. Uh, thank you. know, you're listening so closely. You're you're listening. You know, maybe just one last gasp coming out of Elias's mouth. So you're just so intent on it, but uh, instead, you you hear the barely perceptible audio of a police car arriving at the hotel. The police are nearby. Um, Should we um, stand uh, outside? Yes, let's. Maybe we should at least stand outside. in the hallway. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. So it doesn't look like we are we, rummaging we, through his things. Yes, of course. We can do that. Um, I, I'll, I'll need a moment. Um, Yori does the same thing that Gussie does, like slowly going down to the corpse and looking at it with like plaintive eyes and starts to whisper this is very interesting oh my god I guess <laughs> and would history. like to can i examine anything before the police about yeah, this body give me a medicine can... check all right gussie's gonna go stand in the hallway so she can at least what be is happening wow. to me would you like These me to roll a medicine skills. check <laughs> All right, I guess there's nothing. Well, you, you know, you're you're rushed because you're trying to do it before the police get there. You do have the option to push the roll. Ooh. Oh god. <laughs> you... This is not this is not the time to push the roll. Okay. Not right before the police is coming. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'd offer to help you, but my medicine is one. So. Yeah, I have no medicine. I can't help. Right. <laughs> I'm 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 going out to the hallway with everyone else. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. stand in the hallway. All right, so um, you've gathered up these bits of uh, papers and evidence that, and where did you put them? Uh, I know you put that... them, Yori. I know Yori said they. Could <laughs> yeah, I, up I'm taking them. I put them under my uh, coat. Okay. Um, is there a is there a room nearby? Um, Avery has a room in this hotel, right? Yeah. He does. I do. We could put the papers there. Yeah, um, I'll pass it over to Avery. Um, well, I'll give you my... I think it might be best if... You give if me your room keys? You give one of you my room keys and I stay with Patty to talk to the police. Okay. I I also would like to stay, Yori, if you feel comfortable going I just on your own for a moment. Sure. All right. All right. You'll have just excused yourself to the water closet. Yes. So um, the three of you stay. Yori goes off to find uh, Avery's room, and four police officers uh, come out of the elevator shortly after coming straight to the room. They see you outside. And who 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 made the call to report this? I did. You did. I'm glad to see you're out of the room. We're going to secure the room and make sure everything's okay. Um, Lieutenant Poole should be here shortly to uh ask you questions all right thank you and what's uh, the i want to see if i can notice the name and badge number of the of the officer that was the first to show up there um sure uh give me an it's a easy spot hidden roll okay Wow. I think I know where this dude lives. I I went to <laughs> yeah. school. With I his, know his middle with name. His brother. Uh, I learned his mom's <laughs> middle name. Yeah. Uh, I dated his sister in high school. Son. Oh boy. 
the, his last name is Mackie. <laughs> Mackie. Hmm. Yeah, there's uh, Mackie O'Toole and uh, Carnegie. I love it. <laughs> Um, they don't talk to you. They go in. They, you see that they look around and they just kind of stand around milling about. Um, uh, <laughs> one of them stands look outside to you and you kind of get the impression he's there to make sure you don't go anywhere. Nowhere to go. Um, or it being shortly... Uh, it takes almost 45 minutes for the, for a Lieutenant Martin Poole to show up. What the hell was he Thanks, doing today? Poole. <laughs> he was at dinner. We interrupted his family dinner for this. You did. <laughs> probably. Hey, Honestly, crimes happen. Probably. There's no schedule. And it's very snowy also. Mm. Um, well, that's true. So, you see, when he when the man shows up, he's heavy set. Um, he's got a dark complexion, brown hair, and he is, which he wears slicked back. Uh, his he's wearing a suit. It's neat and well kept, but it looks like he hasn't bothered replacing it since he put on some extra weight. Hmm. It's it's snug around the waist and the midsection. Um, he walks up. He's got a little notebook in his hand, and he says, uh, I'm "Lieutenant Poole, um, my understanding is that you called in this homicide." Um, yes, uh, Patty here was the one that actually made the call. <clears throat> we, we witnessed three individuals with knives leaving Mr. Elias's room. Uh, we were meant to have a meeting with Mr. Elias this evening. He was a, a dear old friend of ours. We hadn't seen him in some time. What time was the meeting scheduled? It was my notes. Yeah, I need Dear to go God. back through my notes. Was it eight or seven? Eight. eight. Was it eight, <laughs> eight sharp? It was eight. Yeah. Eight sharp. Eight o'clock. Sharp. And can anyone verify your whereabouts um, prior to your meeting time? Everyone downstairs. Uh, I have a room in this in this hotel, two floors up. Um, I received a phone call from the front desk uh, just prior to this, and and met in the lobby uh, immediately following that phone call. The perpetrators came up and down the fire escape. I hold up my cane. Clearly, that's not something I'd be capable of. Perpetrators, you saw them? The three of them. Yes, there were three of them. They, um, We saw them leaving the room through the window. Um, they went down the fire escape and went into a black car with the um, license plate NYL7. Don't forget they took a swipe at you with those knives, Gussie. That's very true. Um, um, I will go ahead and tell you, I feel that it is important to get you all the information. Um, when the assailants um, came at us for a moment with knives, um, I did use my personal firearm, uh, but no one was hit. Can you describe these knives? Gosh, it was all so incredibly fast. Um, uh, could we tell? Well, I got to see them for a moment. Was I able to get any look at that or on his body? Can I just tell if it was a big knife or a small knife? Because that's the extent Gussie might know anyways. 
It was a unusual shape of knife. Okay. Um, is what you most remember. Okay. Um, I wish I could tell you more. Um, they were they were strange looking. They were not normal looking knives. And the individuals, black, white. Um, they 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 had masks on. I can't remember. Um, I think one of them may have dropped their mask, but they were already facing away from me, perhaps. Uh, but I don't think I have any physical descriptions. I'm going to go examine the body. I'll be right back. Don't leave. Not a problem. He goes in. Uh, you think so? And the door is left open. You can see that he examines the body. Um... Make a psychology roll. Ooh. Can any of us do that who can see through? Is this an everybody thing? Yeah, I mean, you're observing cool. him. Cool. Uh, I'm just like, I hope Patty's involved with this. I feel like you had good psychology. Oh, hell oh, yeah. Lord. I did. There you go, I man. I sure heckin' did. Boom! I see you. <laughs> So, Welcome Patty, you the... see him purse his lips, and then uh, there's a, a flash across his face that there's something about whatever he's just looked at that he recognizes. How interesting. Patty's going to make a mental note of that to communicate to the others later. Not going to talk about it right now. So maybe like try to make eye contact with Gussie, try to like look in at the guy in the room, but maybe Gussie doesn't want to look at her dead friend. Uh, Gussie's definitely looking at her dead friend. Um, that is 100% <laughs> happening. I see. He goes over and he finds the really crappy mask. Comes out. Uh, is there anyone that can verify your acquaintance with uh, Mr. Elias? Oh, um, I'm sure. I also have a um, a message from him uh, while message. I was overseas. Uh, well. How may I get a hold of each of you? Um, I'm going to have further questions. Uh, I want to make sure I know how to reach you. Staying currently near um, the music school, um, a few blocks down, and um, she passes him a, a small, modest business card that has her place of address and her telephone number. Okay, um, he gets all of your various informations. Uh, where he can reach you, and he sit and says, uh, "I'm sure I'll have additional questions for you." And this is quite unfortunate. Um, you folks have, try to have a good night and uh, take care. And he dismisses you. Thank you, Lieutenant. Right. Straight to the elevator, then. Uh, second Gussie's release, she's going to start walking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going down to the lobby, to the bar. Has um, Yori met back <clears throat> up with us? Yes, Yori met back up with you bef okay, good. before the lieutenant got back. All right, cool. Um, Avery, could we also possibly maybe swing by your room for a moment? 
Uh, it's upstairs, but yes, that'd be, that'd be fine. All right. Um, I'm going to go up to Avery's room, whoever wants to join me. I think uh, I would like to stop okay. a moment before departing, yes. I did have something I wanted to talk about with uh, the three of you before we departed for the evening. All right. We're going to go up to Avery's room. I, I, I want to look at those papers, but I'm also here to hear what people have to say. I'm like, I can't just leave these without looking yeah, at them. Exactly. Impossible. Come on. <laughs> you think I can't not look at all these papers? It was meant for my eyes tonight. It was for me. <laughs> me look at Tonight. <clears throat> there was an interim before the uh, lieutenant arrived after I left. Small interim, there was a police <clears throat> officer standing outside the room with you guys, and if you had tried to talk to each other, he would have uh, instructed you not to talk until the <laughs> lieutenant arrived. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, great, cool, fine. And not to go anywhere, not to do anything, um, just wait for him. Interesting. All right. Um... Could I be upstairs looking at these notes? Because I've started looking at them. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, I just started looking. Could I be looking at them? This is yeah. so much. Addie's going to wait to talk about anything until after the door is closed and locked sure. between us and the outside. And maybe so, we should uh, check our window as well to be yeah. safe. So for the benefit of those that are watching, um, <clears throat> Why don't you take turns reading these notes so that they've got an idea what it is? Oh gosh, whoever can read cursive should do that first one. I'm not I volunteering. I can do that. Cool. <laughs> I was just like, nope, <laughs> not me on the first one. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> it's from Egypt. You just That's came from there. Yes, I it did. Is. Dated 3rd of March, 1919. Well, that was Some a bit time ago. Yeah. Dear Mr. Carlyle, your lawyer informed me that you seek certain knowledge of this land and its distant past, and I believe I can aid you in this regard. Inquiries in the old quarter have identified one Faraz Najjar in the Street of Jackals, who claims to be in possession of singular curiosities quote unquote, which he believes will be of great interest to you. He is prepared to part with these items if a suitable price can be agreed upon, and I shall endeavor to make sure that matters are arranged to your satisfaction. Yours, M. Warren Bassat. Hmm. Hmm. Do you know anything of this Bassat fellow? Do I? Do we? <laughs> You guys don't need to roll. None of you know, have any idea who Warren Bassart is. Okay. Um. This next one is a card from the Penhu Foundation with Edward Gavigan as the director. <clears throat> um, it's in London. It's embossed. Look at that. The gold filigree. <clears throat> A very nice, bit. elegantly engraved business card. And look at There's the another one. Um, it from it, this is from Shanghai. Um, the Stumbling hmm. Tiger Bar, Ten Lantern Street. Hmm. There's a. I wish we could show you these uh, images. There's what a photograph the here. Um, the cool three, image. three vessels in this photograph. One looks to be a, a junk. Uh, the other, the other looks to, uh, looks to be a square masted vessel. Uh, one has, uh, Arabic, uh, no, uh, Latin lettering on the, on the, on the aft, and the other has a long swept aft castle. Uh, not much to speak of there. Um, uh, Western architecture in the background, though, and and a very Asian-looking couple of very Asian-looking vestals. The other one has my family name on it for some reason, although I can swear <laughs> to you I'm not associated with these <laughs> people. 
Are you quite certain? Uh, I have no no family that I'm aware of in the import export business. Uh, that you're aware of. Some some distant cousins, the Vandalays, uh, deal with import and export of latex, but um, that's that's all I can think of. Hmm. Not under I... the Emerson name. Yes. And there's also um, under the piece of paper that says Emerson Imports, um, there is a handwritten name, Silas N. Quain. Quane. Yeah, that's on the back side of that business card. Ooh, gotcha. Oh, that's the whole <clears throat> fine. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, ah. Also, and it's in New York. That's in New York. That's right that's here. Just interesting. We could even call There's it. There's another the one um, from the Harvard University Library where um, Jackson Elias wanted to borrow a book, but it's no longer in their collection. I wonder if that's what he was looking for in the, in the other letter. This was just this last year, in November. Incredibly hmm. recent. Very. There's also um, a, um, what do you call it, Patty? Uh, you know, little little advertisement for for a show. Ah, uh, yes, a playbill, or mm. perhaps a um, uh, uh, advertising poster. Depends. Does on this have a date? There. Is this a a big size sort of dealio? Something might be hung upon a on a wall, or is this sort of a little pamphlet you'd hand? It's out a handbill on the corner. Okay. okay. Tonight only the cult of darkness. Um, in Polynesia and the Southwest Pacific, a two-hour lecture with slides discovered by Professor Anthony Cowles, PhD, in the University of Sydney, Australia, and presently Loxley uh, Fellow of Polynesian Esoterica at Miskatonic University, Arkham. Did we it's... meet him? <laughs> did we, do we know this man? <laughs> did um, we... didn't. Uh, hmm. Here, Mr. Tonic um, for a bit. Patty and Yori can make a uh, idea roll, which is an intelligence check. I might okay. have noted them in my notes, which I do consider to be Patty's. Is that does that count or still got a roll? Uh, no, it's a. Did you happen to make the acquaintance of this guy? Kind of thing. Ah, uh, I see. You said an idea roll? Where is yeah. that? It's an intelligence check. Oh, just an intelligence check. Okay. Well, why didn't you just say so? Ooh. Because I'm wow. using old speak. You know, they used to be <laughs> idea dare. rolls. You know we're hip Preposter. cool millennials. We don't know what's going on. Yeah, that's a mood. <laughs> so both of you remember on. him uh, being at Miskatonic mm -hmm. to give uh, a couple, a series of lectures. Okay. Um, but so we would have seen like his name on posters around the auditoriums and whatever. Right. But um the material didn't, you know, really speak to Iori. <laughs> he... At the time. So he didn't attend. And mm. you were busy, you know, doing your I have thing. A... I have plants to water. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh huh. Seymour. <laughs> oh, come on. Photosynthesis does at least 75% of your work. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. These seem incredibly <clears throat> helpful and not all at the same time. Directions they... to look in. Yeah, I think we that's should the most we can hope perhaps, for. Perhaps um, check. Um, so the closest one. Yes. Also, um, I have an idea. If I can just look at some books, um, I'm sure the library is probably closed by now. But in the morning, if I can get to the library, I'm sure I can at least find out more about who may have done this. Um, not saying you all can't either join me or go look into one of these other, um, other routes. But um, I need to get to a library tomorrow. 
We should all. That Emerson be. Imports is uh, is only uh, 20, 25 blocks from here, so uh, it's it's just just uptown a ways. Mm. Uh, we could. How make far a, is that uh, from uh, from the publisher? Because we had just been talking with uh, talking to or about Jackson Elias's publisher, which I know was in the was in Manhattan somewhere. Yeah, so the publisher is on Lexington Avenue. And Emerson Imports. Let's see where that's at in relation to it. It's 684 or 648 West 47th Street. So where does that put it? Uh, east to west with Lexington. We could um, make a, f a field trip out, out of this and visit both of these um, venues tomorrow. I think we should also have a care about what we may or may not be able to get from the police, if anything. Emerson Imports is uh, on the northwest, is <clears throat> northwest of the hotel and stuff. It's right on the Hudson River. I noticed... Practically. Whereas uh, Prospero House is... Uh, it's still in the heart of Midtown. I noticed while the lieutenant was observing Mr. Ellis's body, he looked as though he'd seen something like it before. I don't know if it was specifically the mark on his forehead that he took in, but that was certainly the most significant thing about his person, I would um, say, that might be out of the ordinary. That's true, but it could have... I just, I just want us to have all sides of it he could have just recognized elias as a as a writer possibly but i don't it think was, it's something uh, to discredit i think that's sure. i just want to make sure we're not you know pointing too many fingers too soon but i think that is something good eye mm. um with my uh, psychology role extreme success of two versus 49 uh oh all-knowing storyteller uh would Patty have been able to suss out the feeling of what it was it seemed like the lieutenant was responding to? Would she maybe have been able to track his eye movement? He was certainly looking at the man's face or head. Okay. Supports uh, both. From a distance, it. it would be a little difficult to judge the specificity it's of that. The symbol, isn't it? Presumably, uh, something's it's possible. With maybe some other activity, possibly, in the area. I, I don't disagree. It's possible. Maybe <clears throat> he was simply noting <throat> that he was a, a well-known author in the area. But um, I maybe do think that... some of us could gain information from the police or get some sort of gossip from around town possibly yes. i don't know that it would be good for us to be nosing around the police headquarters having been so near to this incident physically and i suppose also in terms of relations well at the library you can look at older newspapers correct that's true so maybe we check recent newspapers see if there's any information about another murder maybe something similar hmm. And Patty's been living in New York City for a little while during this time skip here. Has anything come up rumor mill-wise? Anything salacious? Anything weird? Anything that might have come across the, uh, uh, either the obituaries or the, um, weird editorials of the newspapers in the area? Make an intelligence check. Let's see if you recall. Let's, Let's find out. Am I smart? Oh. 
Oh my god, I'm There's, so smart. You know, unfortunately the the like tabloid nature of some of the newspapers and printing some of the more salacious stuff, um, you just kind of flip past that stuff. You, it wasn't important yeah. to you at the time. Okay, so that's fair. You're, not, you're like, maybe, I don't remember. Uh, but Something might have come <clears throat> up, but I really Definitely um, something that the newspapers would have, and you could either go to the New York Post to look through their back stacks or to the library to look at them either place i okay. i think we could honestly um part ways tomorrow too at the library too at emerson's that seems we like a wise that. way to go <clears throat> i don't think, I think any one of us should be alone but two and two should work okay i think uh the patty um mr emerson oh yeah you haven't been in new york have you Pardon, Mr. Emerson? Would you speak I up? Have been, I have been to New York. I have not been here recently. I think... Um, um, whoever goes to the import-export, that's... Judging by the address, that looks to be in Hell's Kitchen. Um, be careful. All I could think was Daredevil, sorry. Yeah, me <laughs> as well, I'm sorry. just like... <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll be going to the library, so whoever wants to join me is welcome to. I'll join you. Perfect. <laughs> You've got a whole party full of nerds. I think most of us <laughs> would like to go to the library, but Probably, um, yeah, that's but... fine. I'll, Patty, you and I can, <clears throat> can follow up on some of the other leads. I think the two of you might be better suited to, you know, the, the seedier uh, aspects of the city. I mean, you're probably not wrong, honestly. I've seen enough underbellies in my time. And Yori and I look like big nerds, so... You do! So we'll... that's a plus for the both of you! So we'll go to the library and not try to be cool in Hell's Kitchen. Uh, you know, is there... that's how you survive in this world, is by being a nerd or being cool. Um, <laughs> is there anything else that we needed to discuss? We can pick a time to uh, at least um, Yori and I for us to meet up. Perhaps um, after <clears throat> lunch or some something? Um, I would certainly like to get out earlier, maybe after, maybe after breakfast, I'd like to get to the library. Sometimes it takes quite a long time to find things. Yes. I thought, it, I thought it meant to meet up after we had to done meet our up research. After lunch. Oh, uh, as, as a full team. Yes, as yes, a team. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Spend the morning doing our own reconnoitering, meet up over lunch, and... Got you. Um, yes. Late lunch. Late lunch. Yes. I don't trust a library. That's right. <laughs> um, I think that's wise. Is, is there anything else? Is that our game plan? Yes. That sounds about right to me. All right. Mr. Emerson, uh, you and I will meet tomorrow morning, and uh, shall I meet you here? Um, let us, let's meet in the lobby um, at, uh, say, 6.30. Make our way off. Uh, roads might be bad, but I can't imagine a shop front, even one associated with the docks, will be open before 8, so no point in us going too early. True enough. All right. Well, I'm going to head back to my hotel. Um, yeah, me, need any. If anyone's if anyone's needing a place to stay, um, I'll be in the bar most of the night. They can take my bed. Understood. Um, uh, good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. I'm actually going to my room in this hotel, which I got. Oh yeah, you got a room. I there. forgot about that. You did. I guess I guess Patty and I will show up here later. Patty yes, can chill here, and I just leave, which is also uh, fine. <laughs> Patty Patty will uh, probably go to uh, her own room so as to be a, available there in case the cops call it like 5 a.m. Very true. <laughs> ring ring, 5 a.m. Talk about murder. 
Yeah, like the cops do, you know. Um, yeah, I will, I will head back to, to wherever my hotel was. I'm sure Gussie knows where it was. <laughs> I trust Gussie to know where she's been staying for like a week. <laughs> that seems, that. that seems fair. <laughs> Just wandering the snow, like, I don't know. <laughs> where am I? <laughs> There's too many things um. here. Am I able to get back to my room successfully? You are. Um, Hooray. Gussie is going to go into her room. She is going to walk the door. She is going to check the window. She is going to make sure the mirror is like kind of off the wall and kind of back in its corner. Okay. She is going to grab a pillow from the bed and she is going to slink onto the floor and start screaming into it. And she's just going to scream into this pillow uh, until she gets tired. All right. Sleep comes. The next morning. Avery gets up eventually. <laughs> we said 6.30. <laughs> Yeah, Avery is uh Avery's <laughs> up. He finds out that uh at some point during the night he's broken the the vanity mirror in his room. Uh whether it was out of clumsiness or anger, not really sure, but gonna pocket a small shard of that uh of that mirror, of that glass. Bring that with. <clears throat> and then hobble down to the lobby. Taking the lift. Hobble lobby. <laughs> All right. I'll probably be there first since yeah. I'm on my way. I'm coming. <laughs> Unlike, well, someone here has to not be crazy. <laughs> and uh, just <laughs> while, while discussing how we're prepared for this day, um, Avery is bringing his uh, his 1911 as well as that sawed-off shotgun both under his jacket. He's got a large enough jacket that, uh, you know, he can keep that concealed because mm -hmm. it's it's bloody cold out right now. It so. sure is. Patty's got, like, this big, like, not just a mink stole. She's also got this big fluffy coat, you know, very 20s starlet style you know like all the fashionable girls are wearing <laughs> i'm just a fashionable girl <laughs> i got um... big plans for after i get out of school <laughs> yori would you say it's common for um, you to read the newspaper most days before, you know, as you're getting ready just to keep uh, yourself? I was about to say this. Mm. I was going to ask, actually bring up, like, how how often is the turnaround of newspapers? Like, when would we expect news of this event? It'll hit early. I mean, it'll. this event probably hits the morning paper. Okay. Yeah, that if that's happen. the case, I'm immediately checking the paper because I'm kind of suspecting that they're going to cover this up. So I want to see if they actually publish it or not, or what they choose to publish and not. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, they're probably not going to talk about the culty thing. So uh, the in word. the New York Times... This article is uh, is it's a brief article. It's a brief story, but it's there. Oh, mm. so they at at least um, publishing it. They're not hiding it, which means there might be a trail um, of other murders. Um. Is there okay. anything mentioned in the story about it being in any way similar to another murder? 
like mm-hmm. how newspapers do. Yeah. Oh, well, there can, was this I other thing it. that happened I'll, last June. I can read it. Author murdered by brutal killers. Body found in Hotel Chelsea. Chelsea Hotel. Oh, this is like a historical. Ho- we're in a historical hotel. We are. Possible connection to Harlem murders by Rebecca Schosenberg. Manhattan, New York, January 15. Author Jackson Eli- Elias. Elias mm-hmm. has been found murdered in his Chelsea hotel room. The killers are reported to have used long knives to butcher their vi- victim. Lieutenant Martin Poole of the murder squad stated that he is exploring possible connections between this murder and similar slayings in Harlem last year. Local resident Hilton Adams was convicted of the Harlem murders in October last and is awaiting execution in Sing Sing. Where is that? Lieutenant Poole offered no opinion whether this new murder indicates that Adams had accomplices or is innocent of the earlier crimes. And I believe Sing Sing is a, a prison in New York, correct? Okay. It is. Yes. Yeah, that would make sense. It wouldn't make sense for them to have like imported him to. There are elsewhere. too many clues. Too Everyone many just clues, screaming. Many, <laughs> Who do I clues. talk to? Too many clues. <laughs> too <laughs> many. Talk to all these people. <laughs> um. Thank you. I mean, you, the murderer's uh, already in jail. What are you talking about? Yeah, of course. Uh huh. <laughs> Thank sure. God they caught him last right. year for him to not murder somebody yesterday. Um, <laughs> I so will bring this them. whole thing up with everyone when, when we're all gathered together. Okay. Uh, additionally, so this is the morning of January 16th. Um, on, in an official, um, a courier boy shows up at both um, Gussie's hotel as well as... Um, avery's hotel and a letter is given to you um it the envelope is from prospero house Mm. and inside are uh formal invitations to attend jackson elias's funeral uh it will be at cypress hill cemetery on january 17th tomorrow at 2 p.m That's incredibly fast. Is it? Was he? Was Jackson Elias Jewish? Out of curiosity, he was not. Okay. Um, the invitation is signed by Jonah Kensington. That being his publisher, no? Or oh my god! Did he have children? Was he married? <laughs> No, nope. Jonah notes. Kensington is uh, the the owner of Prospero House. He okay. is the publisher. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I know what I'm doing on the 17th then. Uh, would Gussie have shared that with the group? Um, I'm sure because our two teams each had a letter. I'm sure when... Mm. when we meet he up, meets up, they'll probably lunch. share. And if not, Gussie would share at late lunch cool but she would tell um yori Mm -hmm. uh, when she arrives Mm -hmm. okay so are we gonna are we gonna be are there more things to find this morning before we meet up or anything else cool (laughs) any more things for me does a mysterious stranger call at patty's small apartment do i have to shoot a person <laughs> like I hope what not. do i gotta do i um, hope not um if there's nothing else i think yori and i are ready to skip on over to the the public library all right well some big yeah. boy library we've exchanged our um information mm-hmm. between our two teams so i've shown you the newspaper the clipping yeah the newspaper of today yeah which does indicate that perhaps the, there are details about the past murders in past newspapers. Which we can find while we're at the library. Yes. That was useful. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, well, I'm, I'm ready as I'll ever be. All right, I'm ready. Oh. All right. 
team shark library. taxi ride gets you to the New York Public Library. Um, um, are you comfortable looking for the newspaper? I'm going to, um, you can either join me, but I'm going to start looking for um, relevant things to why this may have happened. I can try, but I, I'm, I get lost in the library, to uh, be quite honest. I understand. You can, you can, you can stick with me. There's no reason that we can't work together. Okay, I will do that. Um, I would actually just in case it's probably easier to find the newspaper thing, and then I can you can start reading that if you want. Um, I think we should look for the newspaper first for a year ago for these these murders in Harlem. All right. We start looking for newspaper articles and go ahead and give me the library use rolls. Okay. All right, library use. You're so oh my oh, gosh, I thought I would fail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that's what I think. Ooh, here we are. Look at We're that. We're so good at libraries. Here we come. So over the, throughout the articles, you find that um, you find evidence of nine previous murders in Harlem. Gosh. That, um, the police seemed baffled by the deaths, um, they said uh, frequently the all the victims disappeared after dark. Um, you find that there is a mention in the papers that a Dr. Lemming hmm. asserts that an African death cult is involved. Oh, Dr. Lemming, good job. Hmm. Let's see if you cited your sources. Um, <laughs> Please cite source. <laughs> there is uh, a Millie Adams, who is the wife of the man convicted. Yeah. Um, Hilton Adams was the one convicted. Millie Adams has gone on record in the papers of stating her husband's innocence. And there is discussions in there that a detective, Captain Robson, out of the 14th precinct, um, was the one in charge of the investigations. And he is quoted as... Um, patting himself on the back in the courts, et cetera, on just a great job of solving the homicides and uh, hmm. that the folks of Harlem are safe once again. Mm -hmm. Good, good are job. They <laughs> good are job. They you did it. Good job. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Interesting. Well, more, and Miss Schosenberg, who is the one that wrote today's article, is the... Um, journalist who wrote just about every single one actually wrote every one of these articles rebecca, mm. <laughs> rebecca. as i'm referring to her as rebecca yes rebecca rebecca so are you wrote. hanging out with rebecca today she seems to have um special interest with these sorts of cases yes and um this dr lemmings <laughs> Does he seem oh. eager to? I was about to say, guy, guy, guy with that name. Hmm. He's gonna be a big pushover, and I'm gonna have to beat him up. <laughs> you ever just know you're gonna have to beat somebody up? That would be terrible. 
We'll see. We'll see how terrible it is if I feel bad about this statement later. We'll see. <laughs> I hope he's alive. Doctor. Let's check some obituaries. He's a doctor, for goodness sake. Yeah, well, I've met a bunch of shitty doctors. Mm-hmm. I suppose. Um, this, this is a lot. Like, the amount I... of information is like they solved it, but we know they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so much information. This is this is like an info dump. Not a plot dump though, but it's an info dump. I know we're so getting, much it is. And it's Ooh. really good information, but I have a really smooth <laughs> brain and I'm dealing with that. <laughs> <laughs> I have oh. notes. I have notes. Yeah, Your I took brain. notes too because I'm like my brain's so smooth. I have to just no, write no. hope for best. <laughs> Full of tentacles is the problem. Uh, it's just my brain is mush. Um, there's nothing going on there anymore. It's just crazy. Um, <laughs> right. That's incredibly helpful. Um, and I'm also very antsy. I'd love to start looking at, you know, the death cults. That's, that's, that's yes. That's yeah. So that. you just go start digging uh, into that information. Um Give me a library use check. Are you saying we can't use our really good rolls? <laughs> no, it's a separate area of the library. Woo! Oh, hell yeah, Yori. Yori, um, <laughs> Yori. Gotcha. Oh, oh, hell yes, yeah. yeah. Got each other. Oh, we, we know libraries. Don't antagonize the nerds. <laughs> yeah, these nerds got it. Nerds! <laughs> okay, so death. Um, you clearly find out that although... Uh, there's not a lot of specifics written it down. Mm -hmm. uh, you are able to track down that that symbol originated with the cult of the bloody tongue. Cult? Oh, that. Oh, the red. Oh. <laughs> okay. Blech. And they originated in Kenya. Kenya. Well, that would mean the masks make sense if it's not an elephant. It could be a tongue. That could be the case. Cult of the bloody tongue. Kenya. This is just going. We need a better library. I mean, the only thing missing in this is Antarctica, honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like we're going to go to so many continents. Uh, Boy. <laughs> We on a globe trot, boys. Who's ready to red line across the continents? Here we go. Um, this was a very good trip to the library. Um, thank you for being here with me, Yori. Sometimes libraries can be incredibly frustrating, and for this terrible subject matter, I'm glad it went well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm glad. Um, I don't think there's anything else I can think of to research. I don't um, think so we, either. I, um, I believe we should um, look into Rebecca Schosenberg. Uh, she is probably, for me, the next uh, target. Target, as if we're The next target. The next oh, no. Target. Don't be heard talking about that. Oh, I agree. One other piece of information I'm sorry was given Ooh. in there. Um, that the cult... Uh, seems to have been descended from a sect um, driven out of dynastic Egypt. From a sect driven. Sounds like. Huh. Surprise, they're, they're set-eyed vampires. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that or it's pillar men. We're going to find out, I'm sure, in Egypt. <laughs> Boy! Back to Egypt. <laughs> mm, good. Um, well, right. we've got a letter from Cairo and... Yeah, we have a lot of things pointing towards Egypt. Some things still in New York. Yes. And um, we have a we funeral have some... we need to go to. Yes. Um, yeah. And with Gus... that... Oh, I'd like to talk to Gassi before we uh, leave Please the Please talk to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I need to talk to you about uh, what happened uh, last night. Oh. Well, Patty and I, it was mostly me, um, made the decision to 
check his hotel room or check on Jackson. Um, and um, I made the decision to leave you out along with Mr. Avery of this little mission. Um, it was partly because um, it would be easier to operate as a, as a smaller group, but also my thought was if I had, if I were to have found something in that apartment and it would have been, let's say, otherworldly. Uh, let's just say I'm concerned about your mind, Gussie. I don't think any of us have forgotten that after you've read a lot of those strange books, you disappeared for a week, behaving strangely. Well, my thought was I wanted to at least insulate you from that before um, letting you see or behold what was in there, if it was safe. I think um, next time mm, I should just involve you in whatever strange idea I might come up with. Thank you but for telling me. But Miss Gussie, um, I can sew back your guts and all of that, but if your mind were to fracture, I'm afraid that's out of my expertise. I wouldn't be able to help you. So it's somewhat of a priority that um, you keep yourself um, level-headed, you keep yourself a little intact. Yori, I consider you a friend and I truly appreciate your concern. Matters of the mind are not your specialty, as you say. I advise you to stick to your specialty. I truly appreciate what you are trying to do. I don't want you worrying about that. Okay, if you say so. I do. Is it lunchtime? <laughs> yeah, we're so going to go on to lunch. And with that, before we head off to Hell's Kitchens to see hmm. if anyone dies at Emerson Import, uh, hmm. we are going to take a 10 minute break. So, Hooray! We'll see you all see in 10 minutes. 10. I, I believe there's no more doubling, so. Huzzah! Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Hooray! It's gone. Well, I love.
Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> are we back? We are back. Oh, good. Indeed. Hi, everyone. Hello, Hello everybody. Greetings. <laughs> Did everybody get a good snack? Oh, yes. Super good. We have Jillian failed her sanity check. She had to put her strawberries away. Guys, huge yeah. strawberry. Um, breaking that was news. The size of a Humongous strawberry. Ball. That is enormous. It's a I tennis never... ball sized strawberry. Listen, this is a Cthulhu mythos strawberry, and that I, might I don't be feel the bloody good tongue. About it. Oh, <laughs> I'll roll sanity uh, right now. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> you never know. All right. So, Patty and Avery were on their way to Hell's Kitchen. You do indeed take a taxi into a very unsavory area. Um, but the taxi driver informs you that you're actually just on the edge of Hell's Kitchen and not quite all the way there. Well, that's... that's From the dock company. side, so, so much better. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Swim with the fishes. <laughs> yes. I hope not. I didn't bring any cement shoes. <laughs> I don't want to be fitted for any either. Thanks. Yeah, you find a long, narrow building at the address found on that business card. Okay. That's 648 Mr. West 47th Street. Mr. Avery, uh, we have uh, aliases in place for walking into you this. See loading docks on both ends of the building, um, and a man door kind of right in the middle. Hmm. You approach it. There is a fair amount of activity inside the warehouse. You can see through the window on the door looks like just peering in you can see that there's a warehouse piled high with freight i think we'll go in? through the man door i think that's for the best <laughs> yes there's something we <laughs> forgot to do in the library. I'm sorry, but we'll do that later after this. Yeah, that we'll just say like we haven't left idea. yet, and we'll go back yeah, to us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. <laughs> That's fine. Excuse me. I'm looking for someone that handles shipments out of Africa. Uh, so you're in, you, you open the door and go in, uh, grab one of the workers' attention, and he points uh, a little bit down the the wall, you see some stairs that go up to some offices. Okay. I'm doing the best impression I can of one of my American colleagues who tries to affect a British accent when in Europe. Uh, <laughs> one, of, one, of those, one of those authors who pretends he's a little above his station. So mm. what Avery is doing is doing an impression of somebody else doing an impression. All right. <clears throat> And it doesn't matter if it's bad British accent. <laughs> that's what the dude does anyway. Exactly. Because he thinks he's better than everybody else. Genius. I was wondering if there's anyone that could help me. I've, I've got some business to attend to. So you climb the stairs, um, open the door, and you see that uh, there's a nameplate on the door. It says Arthur Emerson. Mm -hmm. um, you see a man that appears to be in uh, his middle ages. He's still got uh, a nice set of thick brown hair on his head. It's neatly groomed. Um, and he is wearing uh, a nice suit, tie, a brown suit. Uh, he looks directly at you when you walk in. And quite busy. How can I help you? Are you the proprietor? Uh, yes, I am Arthur Emerson. Arthur Emerson, a good name, good strong family name. Um, I'm Aglo Argleton the second. Um, do you handle imports from from Africa, from East Africa? I've I'm quite upset with my current broker. 
Um, every time I go to Tanzania and Kenya and try to send trophies back, um, they come damaged and I'm looking for someone I can deal with more directly. I'm, I'm tired of dealing with Brits. <clears throat> Um, I do have, uh, I'm a agent for Mombasan exports. So if you need something coming from there, uh, we could probably work with you. Need to work out a rate sheet. Um, who's, who would be your best agent to talk to on those matters? This is, um, something I'd like to get done, uh, Post haste, I'm planning another trip to Tanzania soon. I've I've sent back trophies with my previous broker. They've ended up damaged, and and I've sent I have since become involved in the trade of artifacts. And any time that I send them, they just disappear. The few times that I've tried, you have uh, agents in Africa. I'm uh, dealing with a British agent right now. Um, well, if, if you have people in Africa, I have uh, a Kenyan contact and we could do something there. Uh, what's the name of your Kenyan contact? Well, it's Aja Singh. A-H-J-A. A-H-J-A Singh. S-I-N-G-H. S-I-N-H-G. G-H. And my paramour here, uh, Miss Geraldine Thomas, uh, has invested a small fortune into into curios and knickknacks, and uh, and I'd like to see them actually arrive for her to decorate her palatial estate rather than uh, waiting on boxes that never make the journey. It's been something of a trial, I will tell you. Well, as you can see, uh, my warehouse is quite busy, mm. and. Importing is is what we do. Obviously, and your Aja Singh him. is is stationed in uh, in Africa, or is he, he is in Kenya? Make... In Kenya. Have you met the man in person? Trustworthy, good. Uh, we communicate mostly by telegram. And what was the name of the? of the exporter that you, um, the company? Is that uh, Mombasa? It, it, in Mom Mombasa, yes. Kenya. Oh, in Mombasa, Mombasa okay. Kenya. Okay. Oh, oh, of course. Aja Singh is the, is the exporter. Oh, so much information. I don't mean to take up your time. I just am trying to find somebody trustworthy to deal with. Um, would I, I? I usually have an agent under commission uh, in in Bristol, um, but I'm I'm not happy with uh, I'm not happy with their shipping. I am happy with the service, the the personal service that I receive from them, but uh, the but the their faults have overcome their good uh, their good deeds. Well, if and you, it's time for me to look elsewhere. If you want to see that goods are coming from Africa and arriving here stateside and arriving at their destination, uh, the individual, the only account that I am currently shipping for uh, for this information, gentlemen, uh, he is, sends goods uh, that go to Juju House here. Juju House. I'm not sure I'm familiar with that establishment. Uh, it's um, honestly the owner manager kind of gives me a bad vibe, but. Um, hmm. The Juju House is located on Ransom Court. And um, 
Silas Inquane is the manager. Yes, they are at one ransom court. On just a, a little bit of additional information, do you ever handle shipments from East Asia or uh, any uh, Polynesian islands, maybe maybe New Zealand, maybe French Polynesia, anything in that area? Uh, I've... I do not currently have any agents shipping here that I work with, but if you've got someone that wants to use my services, we certainly could figure that out. Um, I, uh, I've taken a personal liking to some Maori uh, artwork and would like to would like to see about procuring some of that and wondering if this is a place I can also have that shipped to. Uh, I do not thank have you for the information you've provided us today. Um, Geraldine, was there anything else you wanted to inquire as to? Uh, uh, not really, I believe there was too terribly much else. Uh, um, I do think... Was there one other... No, I, I, I think that was everything. And in Africa, is that the only place you ship from is Mombasa? What about uh, further north in Egypt? The only African contact I have is the one I gave you. Mm. I appreciate that, sir. Um, um, either of you can make a psychology check, see if he's trying to hide anything. Mm. Hmm. I think I can do that. Let me have a look and see. <laughs> Guy's never lied in his life. I guess not. Uh, yeah. You know, the thing is, is he's... He just looks like he's all business and not interested you know at this point he seems annoyed that you're taking up his time more than anything mm -hmm. and fair. seems like a straight shooter we should be out of his way very well of course thank you so very very much for all of your assistance so you've been incredible yes yes um uh hopefully we do some business and uh, see yourselves out thank you of course thank you again Shall we take the long way down through the warehouse? I can't hear you. I believe that we ought to, yes. I'm just going to poke through there and see if I can see where the bulk of the shipments are coming from. Just see if there's piles stacked with different, uh, different ports of origin identifiable on the surface in any way. Sure. Um... Guess it's uh our favorite spot hidden. Spot hidden. Spot hidden. Can I assist with that? Assist with it. There oh. you go. <clears throat> Wee -wee -wee Hell yeah! The I'm Miller sisters are rolling hot Ooh. today. We're coming in hot today. Oh, we making up for lost ground, baby. Somebody put a pistol in her hand. <laughs> no, don't! Uh, it, um, most of it is coming out of Europe. Mm. The vast majority of this seems to not quite be of uh, the African continent of origin so much as the European, so far as I can see. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's coming from mainland and UK in, in ge generally. It's mm -hmm. nothing startling. Nothing out of the ordinary for what you would have expected to see coming through this type of port. Right. Mm, okay. Nothing really out of the ordinary so far as I can see, Aglo, darling. It uh, looks like they run a good shop here. We should... Uh... We should meet up with the others. I think so. They'll be interested to know that we've established some very promising contacts. So, in the library, we were um, supposed to go to the Harvard University Library. Is that where we are? 
No, you're at New York that's Public Library. We're at the All Public right. Library. Yeah, that's Harvard where we would were be supposed down in Massachusetts. To... Um, um, we got distracted by a bunch of things because so getting into the Harvard letter. Library is going to require some. Yeah, I was I'm, told to go to the public I'm, library. Okay, mm -hmm. but I'm happy I, to go to more library. <laughs> the Harvard um, Library in New York City, or we have to go all the way back to yeah, is that far away? Boston. How far away is that? It's a significant oh. train ride to Boston. Definitely from New York. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, it's in Cambridge, well, Massachusetts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's that's quite far away. Yes. Not exactly right down the road. But um, if we should choose to go, yeah, if we should choose to go there, um, I might, I should know some people there because that's where I had my um, undergrad. Mm. Anyway. Ooh. Right. We can, if we decide we need to go there at some point, we at least have a way in. But after lunch, maybe we'll try and check up on either Rebecca or uh, Dr. Lemmings. Yes. Just uh, original plan. Yeah. Not ready for a, a long train ride. <laughs> You're not gonna do, but then that that like a long train ride to a library somewhere is very Thulu. So, I mean, I have to be back by a certain time tomorrow. I have a funeral yeah, to go to. After all, of this. maybe after the funeral, we'll see how we feel. <laughs> suppose we'll find out. But. I suppose if there's nothing else we need here, should we go to lunch? Is there something else? No, that's it. <clears throat> all right, time. you all meet up for lunch. Yeah, I think easy enough to say that we we honestly tell them everything. I think there's nothing to hide on our end. We'll, we'll relay everything to you guys. Most we'll nice. tell you. Oh, thanks, that's good. Gussie doesn't um, keep secrets that help people. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well, kidding. we will also share the things that we have found. For instance, the reputation of one Silas Nkwane, who happens mm -hmm. to run a juju house on Ransom Court here in New York. Uh, something of a uh, underbelly sort of reputation to the man. From what I've heard, although it was only from the one source. I mean, we only can assume he's involved in the occult just based on the fact that he knows Elias. That's okay, usually my that. assumption. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and now we know where to find him. Mm. That one's incredibly tempting. No, oh, stick with <laughs> stick with the plan. It's fine. Stick with the plan. Besides, Patty, you know enough about um, the occult. You should be able to hold your own. I mean, I've uh, dabbled a fair bit in my time as well, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we plan on either trying to find this Rebecca, who has been writing all of the, um, all the entries in the newspaper about these murders, or a Dr. Lemmings who also thinks it is an African death cult. So I feel like these are two very useful people um where are you guys having lunch just kind of out and about in new york one of the hotel um restaurants we get a knish at a stand we have time yeah you know we get uh, some could also be eating where uh okay. at the hotel yeah we could, we could go that. back to the hotel or nice something restaurant. in the middle that's where we met up in the I'd say I feel like it makes sense Hell yeah, let's get sticky. Yeah. Uh, Somebody you know knows a good Siamese it. place. I know about what? I was saying you live here. Where would you want to eat? Oh goodness. Well, there's just so very many different places to recommend. But um uh I, me, Mary, Mac, do not know what would have been hot in nineteen twenty five in New York City, but I'm positive Patty would have done. Yeah, we want to go to the hot spot to talk about our occult findings. All right. Well, you know, the the reasonably busy place where there will be enough chatter for us not to be overheard is sure. the idea. Yeah. All right. You have a nice lunch. <laughs> Are you guys going to talk about 
what you, where you think you should go at this point what you're thinking i truly yeah. have no idea where these people are <sighs> at least we know maybe we should come back together because we know where silas is but we don't know where rebecca and dr lemming is well, you know that rebecca is a reporter for the new york times so she probably has a desk there um the doctor is was he a coroner or some for forensic doctor of some I'm sort? I'm guessing he's some doctor involved with something historical, is my assumption. If he is leaning towards African death cults, I don't think he's just a coroner. Hmm. Um, Probably more a doctor of the humanities than a doctor of the human body. Yeah, doctor, the nothing was really revealed about Dr. Lemming in the paper other than his yeah. name being Dr. Lemming. Yeah, mm. I think Rebecca's a good choice because she wrote, she wrote about him, so mm -hmm. she would know more information if we want to pursue him. There's also there's um, other... Dr. Captain Robson uh, at the Harlem Precinct, I think. I don't know if I want to talk to him per se, because he's just going to say he did a good job and caught the guy. Yeah. And, you know, he'll have some sort of excuse for there being a whole new murder that seems yeah. an awful He'll say it's a copycat murder, which it possibly could be. We Who knows, maybe. don't know. This but... one man could have been a member of a cult. And maybe that's why all of the uh, subsequent murdering seems like the other murder. Who knows? His, his wife seems to think he's innocent and has been staying on that train the whole time. Hmm. Um, but she might be worth talking to, I suppose. But or potentially his attorney. This seems to be somewhat exonerating evidence that he might be willing to work with us in exchange for. Um, I don't if... know if it's worth going into that yet. I don't. I don't no, think we but have something to keep in enough. mind. If if we have evidence that a murder similar to what his client is awaiting execution for has occurred while his client has been incarcerated, maybe we can get some information from him. Of course. I don't know if he's on death row. Did it say he's on death row? Yeah, I think so. I think it said he was waiting execution. Oh, his brain, guys. You got to yeah. say things real slow for me. Understandable. Did it say that? That's sad. Now I feel a little worse. Um, Additionally, we did find the name of an, uh, of an exporter in Kenya, you know, in Mombasa. Um, if they have been dealing at all with the proprietor of the Juju house, perhaps sending a telegraph under Silas's name um, to this to this exporter uh, with an open-ended question could gain us a response. I'm I'm worried that's that might be too big of a step right now, um, especially if we don't know who this person is and what exactly their relationship might be. Mm -hmm. I think, yes, if if we explore uh, Silas, I think we should do that one together. Yes, I'm, I'm very interested in Silas. All of us could go together today because we know where, where he is. And then maybe another time we can go check out um, Rebecca. And it's possible because journalists, she might be at the funeral. So that's something to keep in mind. Especially now that, unfortunately, this I... is uh, yet another murder similar to the ones about which she's written. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, we we should take, we our first uh, touchdown should be the journalist because um, the journalist would probably have gone through a like gather the most information from different sources um, compared to all the other sources. So we should make touchdown with the journalist as soon as possible. We could actually all go to the journalist, to Rebecca. We could do that. That seems so a good priority. The um, other, yeah, we can't think of any other way to split our party for now. So yeah, uh, I don't think that's a bad idea. To... Potentially because she might find herself a target sooner rather than later. That this is, is true. true. Might be worth warning her ahead of time. All right, Rebecca, it is. Since there's a known location, if she does attend the funeral, 
that might be a good place that somebody might try to target her tomorrow. Well, hopefully not. She's been writing about this for over a year. I think if they were going to target her, it's possible they would have already done it unless they're working on a timeline. Anywho, um, hmm. um, yes, let's go. After we finish here, we can go see Rebecca. Then nice. Yes. Off to the New York Times. I'm getting Hello. Rebecca's last name. Schosenberg. Okay. <laughs> I'm just calling her Rebecca like I know her. Um, there we go. Rebecca! Um, maybe you do. Maybe I do know her. Maybe you do. Gonna learn. I found out it that I had a cool friend named Elias recently. That was the slings were happening around Harlem. <laughs> then you did, yeah. It's kind of a, <laughs> it's a bummer. <laughs> so, what did we learn? If the keeper gives you a friend, Oh, they're, pro they're probably going to die. <laughs> Nobody be friendly to Rebecca. This is strictly business. All right, listen here, Becky. <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> Excuse me? Who um, are you? Um, There's I also think... like, most of the murders were happened in Harlem. There's mm -hmm. also, we could also try to get like street gossip. Um, on that end, that's an, also an option. It is. I feel like that one's a bit, that sounds a bit more difficult. Rebecca seems to at least like to talk about this, even if it, yeah. you know, is just for money. Mm -hmm. But she probably knows the most, at least from what the police and the evidence are putting out. All right. Let's, let's go to that. Yeah. I feel like asking on the street is how we get in trouble. Probably. <laughs> I'm just know, a little worried about that one. Is Ransom Court, do we know, is that on Manhattan like everything else we're talking about or is that in one of the other boroughs? Uh, Juju House is in Harlem. Okay, so it's in Manhattan. So everything's on the island so far. All right. If you all are ready, I'm. I think I'm at least ready to go talk to Miss um, Schosenberg. Yes. To the New York Times. So, you come to the New York Times, located at a recently expanded 229 West 43rd Street building. Ooh, hoity toity. Yes, they seem to. Um, it is a hive of journalistic activity, you might say. Fake news. <laughs> uh, somebody mute that mic. Um, <laughs> Eat him out the stream. So, um, the front desk is there, and. Uh, someone and the person says hi how can i help you um hello um i am interested in talking to a miss rebecca schosenberg oh um yes miss schosenberg um she's in the crime section of the news department uh right this way show you right where she's at thank you i will follow this very nice receptionist. Yeah. Very, very sweet receptionist. <laughs> Super nice. She um, walks off very cheerful and perky, and um, you arrive uh, in an area with just desks everywhere. Um, and you see a woman, uh, her desk is extremely neat and orderly. Um, she looks up, already. a bit surprised, um, and um, how can I help you? Um, hello, yes, um, uh, my name is Gussie Miller, and I was hoping that I could talk to you about some of your writings. Gussie Miller. Um, this woman, she's small, dark complected. She's got wavy black hair. Um, looks 
maybe like she's not had a good laugh in a very long time and mm. really intense looking, very professional. Um, Gussie Miller, uh, don't recognize the name. Help me out here. Um, um, that's all right. Uh, I'm a writer um, and I wanted to talk to you about a very recent article you've written and maybe some older ones. Oh, which? Um, I would love, I would love to talk about, um, uh, Elias Jackson. Did you know Mr. Jackson? I did. Um, we were, we were friends, colleagues. Oh, well, you see that her demeanor changes at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, and she's attempting to keep the smile off her face. But you can tell that she's quite <laughs> delighted. Blood in the water. Uh, <laughs> that you're here. Um, well, um, of, of course. Uh, um, what can you... I'm, I'm sorry for your loss, but what can you tell me about Mr. Jackson? Um, is there anywhere that we could talk more in private? Oh, yeah, yes, of course. Uh, she brings you over to a meeting room. Ooh, fancy. Coffee. I love it. Um, I'm all right. Absolutely. She pops her head out. Can't and... hear you at all, Patty. I could certainly go for a cup. Yes, please. So, uh, she arranges for coffee for everyone. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, well... I think there's a way that we can help each other. Um, I can talk to you about Elias, and you can tell me what, maybe a little extra details about the um, similar murders from a year ago. Yes. Um, can you describe the... Um, the, the lieutenant wouldn't tell me, but uh, um, she says, I'll be right back. Of course. And she comes back with a picture. Um, and it looks like it is on a person's chest, but mm -hmm. it is an ad identical symbol to what you saw on Elias's head says did he have this mark on him uh, they would they wouldn't tell you well i'm not supposed to have this mark, picture mm. Mm. i like well, her um i have no complaints telling you that yes this image was carved onto his body on his forehead as i thought I've been working so hard with uh, Millie Adams to try to overturn the conviction of her husband. Um, I don't mind saying that that Captain Robson, he's somewhere between blatantly corrupt or incompetent. I own a few of those. Mm. He's a cop, right? <laughs> yes. So you believe that Mr. Adams is innocent? I can, if you work with me, I can work with you and I can get you in to see Mr. Adams and he can tell you himself. Hmm. I would love that. Could be useful. And yes. Um, Captain Robson wasn't initially the one in charge of the case. The bodies, when they were initially found, they were found in different precincts. And the various precinct captains didn't talk. It wasn't until I put the clues together and came up with the conclusion myself that they were all related and that 
Robson got involved, I, I think by default, because more of the bodies started showing up in Harlem in his in his precinct. Hmm. But st- Hilton Adams didn't do it. Uh, they he concocted some fabrication to close the case. I see. So you would make the assumption then that this is probably the same killer or at least same group of killers as before? Whoever is responsible for the previous murders is the same. Yes. I am certain. Mm. So how do you know Hilton Adams was not among their rank? You can meet with his friends. You can meet him and and make your own dis- and make your own decision. I I I would rather you as a group come to your own conclusions and and either dissuade me that I am wrong or come to the same conclusion that I came to. How much time do we have to do that? I understand Mr. Adams is uh not long for this world. Parting part. Oh, yes. Um, it'll be weeks, if not months. I'm, I'm not completely concerned with that. Um, and we've appealed to the governor, so until the governor makes a decision or the appeal passes its time we don't have to worry about that all right uh Um, is there is there anything else that you think would be important for us to know maybe a person Uh, we read in one of your articles about a dr lemmings oh um yes i I can arrange for you to visit with dr lemmings he is uh, located um he's staying at a hotel a very nice hotel but he's staying at a hotel um the murray hill hotel um he will talk your ear off i i warn you good um what could... do you know about um well it seems like all of the murder most of the murders have occurred around harlem is there um have you found any leads with regards to that All of the evidence, um, Captain Robson gathered it and kept it from me once he became involved. I see. All right. Is there anything you would like to know from us? You know, keep it even. Good pro quo, you know. Uh, she asks you to describe at length the scene and what you ran into and what you uncovered and the whole details of the night of January 15th. Uh, Gussie will just start talking. Um, pretty like deadpan, very factual, describing the situation. She will not talk about the papers found unless that seems really important but she doesn't she doesn't feel like giving out that information at least herself but she will describe um the events that they were going to meet for a book sounds inside break down the door three men blah you know the whole terrible thing we all witnessed (laughs) yes Uh, she'll describe the the mask though she'll talk about that yes just not all of the papers that they took you know, illegally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> illegally obtained papers. We'll keep the that mask is, uh, um That's a new piece of information. I, I, I have not heard that before. Mm. Well, happy to help. Um, I actually... And I could do you one better. <laughs> um, I believe that the masks are related to a cult out of Kenya called the Bloody Tongue. Have you heard of that? Uh, no, but... Um... Interesting. I, I want to say I mean, that's similar to what Dr. Lemming was saying. Mm. 
Would you happen to know anything about um, a Silas and Kwane? Uh, that, I don't know that name, no. Or the okay. Juju House? Uh, no. Um, the Juju House. Um, you should talk to... Uh, I can tell you that Mr. Adams was interested in the Juju House. Hmm. Did he express any particular reason why? Um, he was, he had been investigating some, I will tell you that Mr. Adams uh, had decided that he and a group of his friends were going to start patrolling Harlem to prevent any more people from dying. And that I don't fully know what the investigation is. He hasn't told me. Um, but I know that the Juju house was part of one of the leads he was following up on. I see. Um, I am going to give you my information if um, anything comes up, and especially coming to planning to speak to Mr. Adams, and I'm going to give her basically the information to reach me at the hotel. All right. Um, is there anything else that anyone can think of of relevance? Says, uh, I'm, I'm sure you know, but uh, Mr. Elias's funeral is scheduled for tomorrow. Um, yes. I'll I will be attending. Um, I, I figured you did, but I wanted to ensure it. Of course. Um, well, it seems weird to see, see you there, but that is the case. Yes. I suppose. Yeah. I will see you there. Um, I may not print... Actually, I probably will not print anything from our discussion right now. Um, I think that's very wise. Mm -hmm. I, although, if if you get to the bottom of this, I, I would love to write this story. Of course. Um, do you have a card that I could take? Yes, she gives you her card. Uh, and, um, says, uh, I will be in contact with, um, Mrs. Adams then later today, and I'll let you know about my ability to make arrangements for you to see her husband. Um, it won't be tomorrow, but, uh, we, of course, we might be able to do something this weekend. Mm. That would be so much the better. Yeah, that would be great. Do look after yourself as well, please. Not that it's guaranteed anyone uh, will be coming for you, but um, it is known that um, poor Mr. Elias was very involved with um, death cults and the like, and you have been reporting on similar activity related to what happened to him so yeah uh she says also i will call over to uh, the hotel and uh, make them aware that you may pay a visit to dr lemming he's a bit weird about who he will and will not see mm. honestly a bit smart keep that in mind um um thank you uh rebecca this was this was very enlightening yep um, she escort she uh walks you to the front door and says please keep in touch and turns around walks away so helpful do you see 
when you're doing something and then somebody gives you all of the information and doesn't send you into a death situation without the information. See this? Yes. Do we want to go to the Juju yeah. house? I think we should. We, we certainly have time for that. I think so. How about, what time mm -hmm. is it? It's mid-afternoon at this point. Yeah, we have time for that. Oh, yeah, we have time for a swing by the Juju house. Oh, yeah. We even know what sort of establishment that is. I am assuming something occult. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm assuming like, like a jazz museum? club or so, potentially a jazz club or something, but like they might not even be open at this hour. Yeah. <laughs> you have a phone book we could check? <laughs> How do you check things now? I don't have a phone. <laughs> You Google it. Oh, shit. Can I, what, can I Google the Juju House's hours, please? Uh. <laughs> Let's just swing by. If it's closed, we can just come back at night. That's true. Um, some fresh air will do us good, perhaps. Can we please take a cab? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, I suppose, yes. That Avery happen. already in a cab? No, we're taking a Let's cab. No, no, walking. Okay. <laughs> Fine. And we well, all squeeze into a cab together. Yay! <laughs> we're, all in. we're all a bunch of friends here. <laughs> See, so I'm... you head over to the Juju House. Uh, it is on the corner of Ransom Street. And um, from the exterior... Uh, you can t see that it appears to be uh, an emporium um, that deals with curios out of uh, Africa. Um, so, so like a museum, like I was... It's like uh, I was... not a museum, it, it's selling them. Ah. You see... Um, Purveyor of curios and oddities. You spend a little bit of time just watching the place, and you see most of the folks that go in there are African American. Um, they spend ten to fifteen minutes or so in the store. Some of them come out with a parcel. Some don't. Hmm. Well, now I'm excited. I hope I can leave with Maybe with a parcel. We can talk <laughs> to one of the passersby and ask about this place. Uh, um, am I the only one who has no issue just walking in? Is this... <laughs> I, I'm fine walking in. <laughs> Is that I, think, I think walking in would be all right. We can right. walk in. Before we walk in, however, I would like to to warn you, um, be careful what you touch and be careful what you purchase. Mm. I've <laughs> stayed enough, uh, long enough with Mr. Marks that I have seen some... Well, I, I have heard stories of what's happened to investigators. You don't have to tell me twice. Mm -hmm. Okay. We should not touch anything. Unless he's going to touch we want everything. Bye. <laughs> <No. laughs> it's you If you to touch two bad me, things, yeah. it counterbalances and is good thing. Gussie, <laughs> no, that's not how it works, dear. We're going to find out. Gussie, uh, no. <laughs> um... Yeah, no, I think we can go in. We keep your hands to yourself unless there's something. Who's got the lowest luck score Legend. in the group? Oh, boy. Uh, I have a 59. Uh, I... I have a 51. Ooh. Oh, I have a 55. I have 82. All right. Good oh, God. Yori, make... Luck. Yori, make the luck roll for me. Come Gosh. on. Touches oh. everything. All right. <laughs> oh, See, boy. You, you're discussing... Um, as you walk in... Uh, you see, um, like I said, most of the folks coming in and out of here have been African American. You've been in about five minutes, and a smartly dressed white man in his mid-twenties walks in hmm. and heads directly up to the countertop. Hmm. Um, the items in here, uh, I'm not going to have you make an occult check. Uh, by and large, they are very, um, cheesy. You're, mm. you're, you're looking at the stuff that's in here and you're, 
some of it is semi-authentic, mm-hmm. but you're looking at it and you're going, so this is a gift shop of cheap crap. Gotcha. And every, I mean, you're just walking around and um, wondering why anyone who knows anything about the occult or anthropology would buy any of this stuff. Gussie at in defiance, wanna, like just touches five things. I want to kind of like watch out of the corner of my eye what the uh, Caucasian fella like. Yeah. At the counter is doing. I don't want to be invasive. I want to be a little ways too. away. I, like, I, I think it. we're all casually listening to this guy. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking What's around and looking. Like? Avery is Avery's wandering around looking for anything that looks like bloody tongues. Yeah. Uh, there is absolutely nothing in here. Um, as far as that goes, the... Um, so the man at the counter um, that he's talking to is a short, elderly African-American man. Um, very little hair. He's dressed in a very old-fashioned suit. Um, and go ahead and make spot hidden checks. Uh, Come on. Yes! Yes! eventually succeed on one of these we'll find out oh, i did one other Not time succeed earlier i did once oh. i didn't this time though by a lot i'm not spending that much luck well, we can't see uh, the rolls again in the... oh it's just spooky scar um but from what i'm seeing good job yori yep yori passed yeah so... yori good yori. job the thing you you notice two things happen throughout the course of the conversation. Um, Them and their you notice a eyes. muscular man, African man. Um, he is very dark, complected, and of such that you're guessing that he is from Africa, and. Um, his head appears to be shaved, not bald, and, um, very muscular, um, average age. You see him walk up briefly, uh, to the man at the counter and walks away, and shortly, you're just kind of watching these transactions, um, you see the... The man at the counter subtly pass an envelope that looks to be stuffed with something. Hmm. And he puts it in his jacket. And you catch that this man with the, the white man has a uh, concealed handgun under his suit jacket. Hmm. Oh, boy. And right after taking that envelope, <coughs> he turns around and leaves. Mm. The rest of us, ah, yes, a casual conversation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, definitely casual. Nothing suspicious about that. Not a all. single thing was passed to anyone. Very nope. good. Didn't see a darn thing. Um, I'll uh, tell everyone what I saw. Interesting. So my impulse is to just go ask for things. You guys have been in the store about 10 minutes at this point. They're just like, why won't they leave? <laughs> or buy something. I'm going to buy something. We should buy uh, something. Yeah, honestly, I think that that would be fair. Yeah, is there any, anything yeah. like nice made of, is there anything nice made of actual ivory in here? Yeah, there is some ivory stuff in here. Um, it is carved into BS um occult looking things oh no Again. but it but it's there um gosh 
Looking for a Zippo. Can I get a Zippo? An ivory Zippo? <laughs> no. I mean, am I, I wrong to just want to be straightforward? I don't know. I think they have to, like, right? Like, anyway, yes, um, uh, I'm, I, I don't I, know. Am I wrong? I maybe, maybe being straightforward might be for the best, honestly. I think so. Right. We're not going to learn it's, anything if we don't ask. And besides, it's not as though his name wasn't on the business card that was going to be given to I, us. I have it. I mean, Ooh. let's just say I we bring the documents. We always me. bring our, our documents yeah. with us. We have the full, we, have, we got all the documents. Everything. Mm. Pew, pew. Yeah. Um, gosh, I do want to see some <clears throat> cool occult things as well. This is just now personal curiosity. Mm. Um, maybe uh, they have a back room where there are legitimate occult uh, items that's what i'm hoping for, for. I and mean, honestly i suppose if we uh approach like we know what we're talking about which i suppose a couple of us do mm. maybe they'll see we're ready for the uh not quite kids stuff astounding patty you or i well um suppose it depends on how much you've been brushing up on your uh, occult reading, sister dear. One could say I have been doing so much reading, I don't think I've done a lot of other things. But, you know, oh. that's the life of what I do, I suppose. A scholar adventurer, yes. Of course. Uh, I, I suppose out of a, a, a score of 100, I'd say I, I know uh -huh. a good 45%. If I was uh, going to rate my to occult occult knowledge, mm. it would be a solid 56%. Well, by golly, Gussie, why don't you give it a go? Gosh, all this talking to people is going to kill me. I shall I go. I know it, but I will support <laughs> you, dear. Come Thank along. Thank you so Let much. <laughs> I am an inquire introvert. with the proprietor. That's all. Uh, that. <laughs> you um, Gussie is going to walk on up. Excuse me, I know we've been loitering about the place for a while. Um, I was hoping to speak to a, a Silas. Well, you found him. Excellent, Mr. Nkwambe? Yeah. I am, I, that is me, uh, proprietor of this place. Wonderful to make your acquaintance. Thank mm. you so much. Um, we were hoping, rather, to um, have a look at some of your more uh, rare pieces, if you happened to have any in-house. Rarer pieces? Uh, we've been on the market for a while, and, uh, you know, sister and I, we've been looking to expand our collection somewhat. Mm. Um, was there anything, perhaps, that uh, you might have available that you don't typically showcase to the wider public? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I don't quite have anything like that. You, um... He's well, you've come around, so very like... highly recommended to us is the only thing. Um, you you were well mentioned by uh, your author friend, dear. Uh, what was Elias Jackson. Yes, indeed. Oh, uh, well. Um, an author recommended in my shop. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I, would you say you're connoisseurs i would I've seen a fair deal of ivory scrimshaw but uh, the things in this shop don't look to be what uh what i'm accustomed to seeing coming out of out of tanzania or kenya these seem to be less than authentic as far as scrimshaw goes which is why we were wondering if perhaps you maybe had a uh a back room somewhere where you could do business with real artists folks well, who know the craft he says i i um 
the items I have are out here on display. I, I am just a humble old man trying to make a living um, selling some items that bring some happiness to the locals. Hmm. That's, that's very kind of you. Um, sometimes you need, um, you know, your spirit lifted. Um, authentic or not, um, the shop does bring a bit of joy. I think well, so. Yeah, um, I, if you give me an I where might I find you if I've got, say, a piece that I would want to bring to you personally to show? Interesting. Um, well, I'm not going to be in town for too terribly long, but I could direct you towards my hotel. Well, that sounds wonderful. Uh, no promises, dear. Hmm. Of course, I understand. Just I'll keep my fingers crossed. Hope for the best. Yes, yes. Oh, certainly. Um, Wide world of shipping being what it is, timetables aren't always accurate. Heaven only knows. Mm. And I'm assuming that man who just left is somebody who's waited for your wares? Ah, uh, he... Um... Oh, that man. Um, mm. He uh, certainly... Um, is in here often. I see. Um, if you don't mind me asking, because maybe it'd be easier if we're interested in similar things, what maybe you're procuring for him? I, I, I can't share that. Um, but, you know, um, he gives you a piece of paper to write down where to find you at. Mm-hmm. I'll write down my, like, hotel and, like, enough of my name for, like, the person to, like, call me down. Sure. And I'm not giving him my exact room number. Okay. That sounds like something a very insane person would do, and I'm only slightly insane. Right, yes. right, right. <laughs> yes, yes. Quite fair. Um, well, um, you know, I, I keep all of my transactions individual. I, <laughs> you know, um. Uh, Gosh, an author recommended me. Wonderful. You came very highly recommended. Mm -hmm. um, I believe and... he was looking for... Gosh, was he talking about looking for a book? I can't recall. Wow. I, 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 um, it was either a book. I occasionally get some interesting books. I can't... Mm. I don't have any now, but yes. Understood. Thank you very much. Uh, Gussie's just like, just just say it, Gussie. Just talk about it. Mm -hmm. Do you happen to know anything about the cult of the bloody tongue? Uh -huh. I know a bit macabre sounding. Well, that the cult of the bloody tongue. Uh, I mean, it it sounds like something that might come out of um, an author's book, doesn't it? It truly does. Maybe it was just stories that were being spun to me. Very possible, you know, sometimes. Uh... Psychology and authors are full of bullshit. <laughs> that is incredibly <laughs> true. Psychology and. <laughs> Is that what you said? What did you say, Sai? Yes. Uh, can you do a psycho psychology check? Can you I do think that? that would be... I have no psychology, but I... Oh, sure. Is I have guy, some psychology. Is this guy being, I would being like sneaky? To... Oh, no. Oh. On a dif... Nope. Well, hmm. Gross. I... Certainly not. I could spend... I could spend Ooh. five lives. Ooh. Or, you know, Never maybe mind. Mr. Avery's got his number. Who knows? Um, I thought he seemed very truthful. <laughs> I mean, I've traveled to Africa. Does this guy seem like he's legit, or does he seem like one of the people that is just selling junk in the market to people that don't know any better? Um, I feel like Elias wouldn't. He uh, he is so. When you 
called his wear Scrimshaw. You could see that um you you just knew that he knew you were telling the truth and he wasn't going to admit to it. Um you can tell that he's not been entirely truthful, but you don't think he's been attempting to be uh, harmful or disingenuous. Um, um, Is it you, more the feel that he's trying to cover his own ass? You think actually that he just might be addled at his age a little. Oh. Mm. Uh, I feel you, sir. Mm. He's he's in his 70s, and, you know, his cackle, you know, when he's laughing about stuff, uh, it just seems like what he finds, some of the things he found funny aren't really that funny, and yet, he seemed to be genuinely amused at that moment. So big King Boomy vibes from Avatar The Last Airbender then. Or maybe Josh is right in. He's as sane as Gussie. Yeah, I just saw that comment. Wow, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, he's probably saner than Gussie. Um, probably, <laughs> probably most he might people be are saner. saner than Gussie. I'm just going to say time. that now. <laughs> are there any plant-based products uh, on sale? No. Yeah, no air okay. plants? No, he has no air, air plants. plants are no not plants. a thing yet. I um, thought he was taking a Roshan approach to this at first. When he said it, I was like, oh yeah, he's a botanist, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for tea. Um, um, uh, I mean, that's not entirely true. Yes, he does have uh, incense for sale. Incense. Amazing. What okay. kinds of incense? What scents? Yeah, where's that are there? from? Uh, he has all kinds of incense, as well as stuff that uh, may not entirely be legal. Hmm. Hell yes, yeah, Silas. Twenty-five. There's probably a whole lot of things that were le legal, or yeah, it's it it's borderline stuff, but. Uh... Ooh. I'm going back to this. Where can I? Silence? Can um, I procure one of these borderline things? Yeah, I'd and like he'll to even sell you um, a fancy pipe to use it. Yeah, baby. Does he have any um, ingestibles? No. Oh, okay. boo. Just oh, do you have any edibles? Just <laughs> <laughs> I like some gummy bears. <laughs> um, for my anxiety. Um. Well, Silas, this was, this was, this was great getting to talk to you. Um. Mm -hmm. And if you find anything, please do let me know. Oh, I will, Missy. You betcha. All right. You I'm, have a good day. I'm getting day. one of those uh, smokables. <laughs> mm -hmm, All right. Me too. I'm buying a pipe. <laughs> I, I am gonna buy a pipe. Yep. 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 Nothing to go in it. Just a pipe. Yeah. He's got some authentic. Um. He actually has some authentic pipes from, you know, African cult, um, tribes type stuff. Oh. Sweet. Gussie's not going to buy anything. She's like, everybody That's else That's about the buying. only authentic stuff in here that isn't chitchy. Mm. So. Yeah. Enlightening. Mm. <laughs> I, have to add the, I have to add the smokables. <laughs> just, just smokables. I need to throw that into my inventory ASAP. No, no, no. It's, it's very well, essential. It's incense. Exactly. It's patchouli. Yeah. I guess and with that, uh -huh. our mm -hmm. investigators head back to their hotels to think about what they've learned and what their next steps are. And uh, mm. I guess we'll find out in two weeks. Suppose so. Oh boy. What they're I mean, gonna do? If so. Patty's gonna talk to a corpse, she's gonna need a reefer and a gang of gin. Oh, you oh know my the gosh. This is a lot of clues. I'm. 
Yeah, we, so we, we got a whole lot of uh, hey, Listen, we already crossed off possibly one of them. We got Silas, and either Silas will never speak to us again, or we'll send people to kill me in the night. Whatever. Whichever, <laughs> whichever winds up whichever happening one it first, is. it's fine. But we'll I guess we'll see next time if I'm murdered in my sleep. <laughs> Hooray! Welcome like to Call of Cthulhu. You can come stay at my place if you want. <laughs> Listen, sorry, I have to go be crazy at my own house. <laughs> Can't be crazy at other people's I, houses. Can I get like a bowl and like <laughs> things to light things with, like an incense bowl? Leave and... the, like <laughs> I have my incense. The kit. whole incense kit. Yeah, I'd like to get that. <laughs> Just come in with a huge bag. Like I'm, I'm trying new things. Oh, yeah. boy. It's just a small bowl, like a dish, you know, where you could put it on, burn yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Can't hang so. out with you guys while you guys get blitzed. Yep. Yep. Hey, you don't drink. That doesn't mean you can't. Oh, so. She's certainly not. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're not doing that either. Uh, no one's You need to stop hanging out with this prude. I think, yeah, um, yeah, she ain't after, after, Listen, yeah. guys, if you guys are going to be bad, I'm, I'm not. All your friends out. are doing it. Yeah. Sadly, I'm too crazy to peer pressure me. <laughs> I don't care what people think. I think after the funeral, we should pay a visit to uh, the police. Uh, what's his name? God, I do Anderson? not want to talk to this police officer. I just feel like, first off, we're just going to get on his radar. And I feel like that's yeah. a terrible idea. Let's go uh, get high and talk to the cops. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good idea. No, I don't think was it already illegal. I don't think so. I think I it's like know. 1911 or something like that. That uh, let's see when. No, 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 no. Mar- marijuana didn't really become an issue in the U.S. until uh, uh, they Jay Edgar made Hoover it. tried pinning it on Mexicans and you know drumming up fear over that. We don't know what the, these are. They, they we don't know what plants. Yeah, I don't they think are. we have we weed. We have something. We smokeable. have something yeah. else. Oh, do we? You now? have like opium or something. You got something oh, cool. crazy in that bag. <laughs> I'm a botanist. I can did figure he... it out next I time. I do want to know did he have marijuana or was it mainly opium? I'm sure, I'm sure it was probably Are... neither, but. This is important for my character. You have... She needs her he material had... components. He had opiates as well as uh, medicinal herbs. Man, party Medicinal hard. Herbs. Silas, Hell yeah. Best character we've met. And um... I love him. Let's <laughs> I support go to him in everything he does. Until he sends someone to kill you in your sleep. Until I mean... even then, I might forgive him because I came into his his place of business asking about death cults. I get I it. feel like he could chill with Ellie and a Thumbla over in On the Backs of Gods. What? Talking of which Speaking of On the Backs of Gods, hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we have some other shows segue. of the Dice Cult. If you want to check out a D&D game, we have a Norse mythology-inspired game on the backs of gods every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm-hmm. And on Tuesday, we have the Legend of Theia, which happens at 9.30 um, p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is just more of a, I think, more of a, a casual game compared to um, the intensity that is sometimes on the backs of gods with horrible... Um, giant blobs of orcs becoming one big orc um and then on wednesday uh, we have something a little different we have part two of our monster of the week one shot um so if you're interested in watching that um first off you can watch the first one on twitch or you can head on over to youtube the dice cult if you're interested in watching it there but on wednesday we're gonna have Part two of our another fun, our historical fun story. game. Oh Just yeah, like if you're into a, a history, oh, yeah. um, some, twenty years forward, yeah, Ooh. Some, some spooky stuff. Yeah, we got you covered. And then on Saturdays, because we are alternating, as we said, um, mm-hmm. next Saturday we have uh, Vampire the Masquerade. Um, and if you are interested in that. Um, two of our players may be getting in a car and, you know, going and probably dying. But hey, we'll watch them roll new fun. characters or something. Yeah, that's the dice call. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be great. We'll go mm-hmm. off. Yeah, you know, like you do. We'll see you all soon. Well, I... well <laughs> I'll yeah. see you guys Monday. I'll yeah, see no. you all next week. 
Yeah. Looking yeah. forward to that. Thank you all so much for joining us for our lovely little story time. Yeah, for our clue gathering oh. episode, because boy golly, we got clues. <laughs> we got so many. We have, I have clues, clues coming up my ears. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night all. Night. Good night. That's it.